Lesson 1.1.5, simplifying expressions with rational exponents. We're going to do a real quick recap on some exponent rules and then uh, work through a couple of examples with you. Uh, just a real quick recap. Um, we've got on your resource for this section, we've got some different um, objectives pointed out. And we're going to go just kind of work through that with you real quick. So objective one, multiplying exponential expressions. So that would be that the base is the same. That means the big number is the same. And then the exponents are going to have to be dealt with according to multiplication. So the general rule is that if the bases are the same, we would simply add the exponent. Now, real quick explanation on why that is, and we've we've even reviewed this even earlier in the year, but just to make this clear, 3 to the second power is 3 times 3, and 3 to the fourth power would be 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So when you multiply all of those numbers, if you count them 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you end up with 3 to the sixth power. Well, that was the equivalent of just adding the 2 and the 4. So again, if I wanted to see this in motion, y to the 4 times y to the 10th, that should be y to the 4 plus 10 or y to the 14th power. 12 to the 3rd times 12 to the 5th would be 12 to the 3 plus 5 or 12 to the 8th power. And then because 12 is a, a number, not a variable like y was, I can actually type that into my calculator. And you just type that in 12 to the 8th power and get that number. It's going to be a big number, but you could type that in. We couldn't type y to the 14th in, so we would have to stay there. But if uh, it is required of you to go ahead and simplify all the way down, you would type that into your calculator. So general rule, multiplying like bases, add the exponents. Objective two, dividing like bases, we would subtract the exponents. So a to the m minus n. Now with this, you do have to be cautious. We don't want to have negative exponents, and we'll talk about how to deal with that in a second. So 3 to, three to the 6 divided by 3 to the 2nd would be the same as 3 to the 6 minus 2, or 3 to the 4th power. Uh, y to the 10th divided by y to the 4th would be y to the 10 minus 4, or y to the 6th. And 12 to the 5th divided by 12 to the 3rd would be the same as 12 to the 2nd, because that would be 5 minus 3 is 2. Okay? Now, again, here's the general rule. We subtract exponents. You do want to be careful when we talk about negative exponents down here on objective 3. For instance, 3 to the 2 minus 6 is going to yield 3 to the negative 4 power. Well, I don't really know how to raise something to a negative power. You can't multiply something negative 4 times by itself. So what we talk about is in order to make an exponent positive, we treat it as if it's doing the inverse of what it's telling us to do. So 3 to the 4th power would be multiply 3 by itself 4 times. 3 to the negative 4 power would be divide by 3 4 times. So a to the n, a divided by a to the n is the same as a to the negative n. So we're going to kind of use this rule and go backwards. So this is the same as 1 over 3 to the 4th power. Now I've got a positive exponent, and I understand how to deal with that. y to the 4 divided by y to the 10th would be y to the 4 minus 10 or y to the negative 6. I don't want a negative exponent. So that's just simply do the opposite. Y, divide by y to the 6th. 12, divided, 12 to the 3rd divided by 12 to the 5th would be 3 minus 5 for my exponents. So 12 to the negative 2 or 1 over 12 to the 2nd power. Objective 4. We're going to go ahead and talk about multiplying exponents. Now you multiply the exponents when you have this very specific situation. When I'm raising powers to powers, what I mean is a to the m down here is being raised to the n power. So that would be a multiplication situation. So everything inside of here is going to get raised to whatever that power is. So you would end up doing this at whatever that number is. So if you add 3 to the 6th to the second power, that's 3 to the 6th 
times 3 to the 6, and then you would end up with 3 to the 12th power. Well, that's the same thing as 3 to the 6 times 2. So that's where we could kind of confirm that multiplying is the same thing as raising powers to powers. So a to the m times n. This would over here be y to the 3 times 4 or y to the 12th. Here we would have both numbers getting raised to the 12th power because this is like 12 to the 1st and m to the 1st. So that would be 12 to the 5th, m to the 5th because we ended up with 12 to the 1 times 5 and m to the 1 times 5 power. All right, and again, you have to make sure that you keep in mind that if I raise a set of parentheses to a power, everybody gets raised to that power. So it would be a to the n times b to the n. Okay, here's some examples down here for you. You could try those out on your own. But we're going to kind of keep moving on to the second part of this lesson, and this would be the rational exponents portion. Now, we've got a neat little graphic for you here that kind of reminds you kind of the fundamental idea. Rational exponents, we rewrite rational exponents as a power over a root. All right, so what we've got here is b would represent the root, and a would represent the power. So we're going to rewrite this as x to the a over b. So that would be the power a over the root b. All right, so real quick refresher. A to the, this is like a to the first power, that's an understood one. So this would be a to the one-fourth power. Okay, here we have a root of five, so that's going to be my denominator x to the three-fifths, y to the two-fifths. Four is our root here, so this would be 16 to the one-fourth power. Don't forget that 16 is kind of its own number, and it needs its own exponent. And then z to the two-fourths, and you can reduce that by saying, okay, 16 to the four, one-fourth power, if you type that in your calculator, you would get two. And z to the two-fourths would be z to the one-half power. All right, going the opposite direction. This is my power, which goes underneath my radical. And this is my root, which goes outside. So this would be the third root of y to the first power. Okay, 8 is my denominator, so that tells me that that's my root. And 3 is my exponent for, on, for the, the numerator, so it's my exponent on the C. Okay, I've got a negative exponent, so first I'm going to deal with that. So we don't like negative exponents, so we're going to do 1 over 25 to the 1 half power. We're going to go ahead and deal with that. But then, notice that I'm not dealing with a variable kind of like C over on the previous example over here. I actually could type this into my calculator, 25 to the 1 half power. It actually is the same thing as taking the square root of 25. If you looked at it as something like this, and 25 is a perfect square, which is 5. So the square root of 25 is 5, and 1 fifth is C simplified or rewritten as in it was in radical form. Okay, here's a couple of examples for you here. Um, I'm going to go through the simplify the following, and then I'll let you do the you try portion. Again, when we have two like bases joined up next to each other with no symbol, that means multiply. Multiplying like bases means add their exponents. So this would be y to the 5 thirds plus 7 thirds which is y to the 12 thirds, which ultimately ends up being y to the fourth since I can reduce that fraction. Same thing here, I'm going to end up adding the exponents, 8 to the 3 halves plus 5 halves. That's going to give me 8 to the 8 halves. Reduce that fraction, and that's 8 to the 4th power. And I could type that into my calculator and get an actual number for 8 to the 4th power. All right, now dealing with the radicals here, the root understood here, you would think it would be 1. You would think it would be 1. That would be an honest mistake. But the reality is, when it comes to roots, it's actually an understood 2 because we say square root. 
So we're going to treat this as 17 to the 1 half power and 17 to the 2 thirds power since this is my exponent and this is my root. There was an understood one here. I know what you think it might have should have been an understood one there. It's actually an understood two because of the radical. And now I'm going to go ahead and add the exponents. That's going to be 17 to the 1 half plus 2 thirds. Now you got to go back to middle school and remember that you can't just add fractions if they don't have common denominators. So common denominators is required here. So 1 half and 2 thirds, their common denominator would be a 6. So this would be 17 to the 3 6 because 1 half and 3 6 are the same thing. And this would be 17 to the 4 6 because 2 thirds of 4 6 are the same thing. Now I have a common denominator and I can add those two things together. So I would get 17 to the 7 over 6 and I could rewrite that if I wanted to as the 6th root of 17 to the 7th power and again if you would prefer a number that could be typed into your calculator. Over here we're going to have to subtract these exponents because of the like bases so that would look like this 2 thirds r to the 2 thirds minus 1 sixth they are going to need a common denominator the common denominator between 3 and 6 would be 6 so this would be r to the 4 sixth minus 1 sixth and that would give me r to the 3 sixth or r to the 1 half when I reduce the fraction which is the same as the square root of r.